Ashdown Forest, a former royal hunting park, is a huge area of heath and woodland lying on the sandstone ridge of the High Weald, halfway between London and the south coast. The High Weald is one of the most wooded areas in the UK, but over the centuries the commoners have maintained areas of heathland on Ashdown Forest through a combination of firewood collection, grazing, bracken cutting and burning. Today, the forest is made up of around a thousand hectares of woodland and 1500 hectares of heathland. The heathland is one of the rarest habitats in Britain and the conservation work carried out by the conservators and their team of dedicated staff and volunteers is vital for its survival. The great majority of the woodland on the forest is very young and develops as scrub and trees which invade the heathland no longer being used by the commoners. There is some older woodland in areas that are very inaccessible, however, especially the steep-sided stream gills. These damp, shady gills provide a perfect habitat for mosses and liverworts, and there are many species on the forest. Some wild flowers thrive here as well, flowering early in the spring before the trees develop full canopies. Ferns are perfectly happy in these damp environments and the forest supports some species which are now rare in the southeast of England. One rare plant found in the beech woods is the bird's nest orchid which is saprophytic, living on dead plant material underground. It's usually only seen when a flower spike is produced in the early summer. Dormice traditionally favour coppice woods and they certainly do live there. However, they're also found in the young mixed woods that have grown up in areas that were devastated by the 1987 storm. Dormice are being monitored as part of an ongoing survey of over 100 nest boxes erected on the forest. The many deer which live around the forest spend most of the day browsing through the woodland, only venturing onto the open heath once the visitors and their dogs have gone home. The high deer population can damage woodland, and they're a menace on the roads, but they are a welcome addition to the heathland, helping to suppress the succession to scrub and woodland. Heathland plant species frequently have adaptations which have allowed them to thrive under the commoners' farming system. Bracken, almost certainly the most frequent species on the whole forest, was managed by the commoners as a straw substitute. Once it was no longer cut and collected, it began to spread. It expanded further due to arson fires, which suppressed competing vegetation. Gorse, protected by its spikes, spreads especially where the ground is disturbed. Unlike bracken, it has a high wildlife value in its younger stages, supporting species such as the Dartford warbler. Gorse is a legume compensating for the infertile forest soils by collecting nitrogen directly from its surroundings. There are two species on the forest, the aggressive European gorse and the softer and more delicate dwarf gorse seen here with ling heather. Though somewhat protected by its spikes, gorse would have been an important nutritious food for the commoners' animals in the winter. Gorse and bracken both prefer a somewhat drier habitat, where they're joined by plants such as bell heather, heath milkwort, and sheep sorrel. Other species thrive only because grazing animals help to suppress their more vigorous but palatable neighbours. Marsh orchids and marsh gentians cannot compete with the ubiquitous purple moorgrass, but survive very well when sheep and cattle graze the grass down to a less competitive level. Nightjar and woodlark both nest on the drier areas of the forest heathland, where they're occasionally joined by the venomous adder. Though the forest soils are sandy, the sand tends to be fine with a high silt and clay content. This leads to impeded drainage and a preponderance of wet heath and bog communities. Cross-leaved heath is the dominant heather here, and the moor grass can form tall, inaccessible tussocks. In the wettest areas, sphagnum moss forms in boggy pools. 
There are several specialist species here, including small red damselflies and great raft spiders. Sundews compensate for the infertile soils by capturing insects on their sticky leaves. So, these unique and complex woodland, heath and bog environments are under threat. And to protect these habitats, the conservators depend on grant funding and support from outside sources, such as the Society of the Friends of Ashdown Forest. The Friends was formed in 1961, and for over 50 years, through voluntary efforts, they've helped in the conservation of the heathland, encouraged education of the importance of the forest, and raised funds to supplement the efforts of the conservators. Becoming a friend not only brings the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping in this vital work, but also brings member benefits, including invitations to specialist walks and lectures. Over the years, our ways of life have changed beyond measure, and today many commoners don't exercise their rights over the forest at all, and the habitats will disappear unless we continue our conservation work. We need our visitors, however, to understand its importance and would hope that in commencing your visit at the Forest Centre, where there's a wealth of information available, you'll be better able to plan your day and enjoy it even more.